Hi and welcome to yet another Razorback screencast. In this video, I thought that we should add some cables to the battery terminals that we added in the last video. I'm thinking we should try a slightly different technique though. Normally we would just use a sweep nerves to place some cabling along and have it go off into the machine somewhere. We're going to do something similar but I think we should use the spline wrap deformer. So I'm going to start by copying this terminal object, this, this connector object, and we're just going to start a new file. I'm going to paste it into the file, and I'm going to zero its position and rotation. So now it is at the center of the scene and at the right size. So let's just rotate it so it's facing up. And Let's move it up into the air, so this part is at the top, and any cabling would just be facing downwards. Now, typically what we see for things like this is the heavy-duty cabling actually goes into the inside. It's then crimped and then covered with heat shrink tubing. So, what we need to do is create a cylinder. Really large cylinder in this case. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm not, rather I'm not going to make the cylinder editable. I'm going to leave it um, as a parametric object. And let's just reduce the size of the cylinder until it just fits in the terminal, like that. And we need to add some subdivisions to the cylinder. So it should only have about 12 rotation segments. And for height segments, we can give it something much higher. So in this case, it, in this case, it has about 50 height segments and about 12 rotation segments. And now we can add our shrink tubing. And now we can add our shrink tubing. So for that, we're going to use yet another cylinder. I'll just duplicate this one instead of making a new one. And we can scale it up until it encompasses what we've got. Let's reduce its height segments to about 5. Rotation segments of 12 is still OK. We just reduce its height. So now we can sort of interactively drag its height, and we apply our shrink tubing over like this. So the shrink tubing is kind of insulation that's used. Now we can go from the side view, wireframe mode, and we want to taper the cylinder off. So I'm going to use a taper deformer in cylinder 1, and we can just zero it out. And once it's zeroed out like that, we can scale it down, and we can try tapering. So if we scale it down really small, we can actually create a taper that only affects part of the object like that. Of course, we see that we need to flip it upside down. So now we have the ability to have our shrink tubing exist right there. If we reduce the tapering a little bit more, you can see we have it shrinking down onto the other cable. So we've kind of created our cable here. We still need a way to bend it. But before we figure that out, let's group everything into a null object so it's nice and portable. Now the cool thing about the spline wrap deformer is that we should just be able to create a spline. Let's use a B spline. And then we should be able to 
call this cable put it in a null object again and then place a spline wrap deformer next to cable and tell the spline wrap to use the spline now that's obviously wrong but what we can do is tell the spline wrap deformer to use a different axis for instance the y-axis now we have a cable that is bending with the shrink tubing and everything one thing to watch out for is that with the spline wrap there's a few different modes one mode will fit it to the spline the other mode will keep the length and if it keeps the length you can change the end mode so for instance if our spline was not long enough let's use the other end of the spline for this if our spline was not long enough what happens well it just straightens out and I think that's exactly what we want now, even if the terminal isn't facing the right direction we can always click the spline wrap object and we can change the rotation So I think this is a really good technique for creating the cables. So now I can just uh, I can just select these two objects, copy, go back to my razor back, and I can paste them back in. The scale should still be the same. So I should now be able to come over here to the battery. And we should be able to, you know what, maybe if we flip the spline it would work better. So in the spline wrap object here, we can do, instead of Y plus, we can do Y minus. So it starts at the other end. So right now this is in the battery module. I'm not sure that's what we want. I think what we want is the spline and null to be outside of the battery modules in their own group. Sort of called cables. So this is one spline. And what we can do is start drawing the spline so that it starts up here and then continues that way easiest way to do that is to delete all the points and just start drawing how we want our cable to come So in this case, I can just take my spline and move it over, position it right there on the terminal where I want it, or where I want it to start at least, and we can use the spline wraps rotation option so that it rotates in the right direction. You can probably delete this one, this terminal. And instead of having to struggle with a few objects and getting them all to line up, in this case we only have one object. And what's even better is that the object can bend. And that's actually a good thing in this case because it means that, for instance, if we wanted to bend the terminal upwards a little bit or make it curve, can actually do that. So it's really flexible. And no, no pun intended, but it is a really flexible technique because now you can sort of move this in any way you want. And then you can just position it there and move the cable to go wherever you want. So in trying to keep this video relatively short, 
Um, I'm not going to position all of them. If any of you guys are interested in this technique, I think you have what you need now to take advantage of it. And, you know, I'll just stop the recording and I'll finish tweaking this off camera. And until next time, see ya.